Hello everybody and welcome back to the coolest dog training channel right here on YouTube. I'm Tom Davis, America's Canine Educator. This is Lakota. Today I'm going to be answering a very frequently asked question by you guys on how to properly fit the remote collar to your dog. And don't forget to watch the full video because we are going to be playing Tom's Trivia later on in the episode. Now it sounds kind of silly to say like, how do you put on a collar? It sounds pretty self-explanatory, you just put it on. And well, I would say I would agree, but there's also some really key components to make sure that you're doing this properly. And as you guys know, I really, really like using Dogtra products. So today I'm gonna be sizing up the Dogtra Arc with Lakota. Now Lakota is about 50 pounds, she's a Dutch Shepherd. All she wants to do right now is go play ball. But I'm just gonna show you guys how to put this on properly to make sure that your dog training is consistent and effective, especially when you're training off leash. It's very important. Normally your remote collar will come with this plastic strap. It looks like this, it's very black, sometimes orange, depending on what collar you get. And then your remote would be on here. I switched it out to a bungee collar, which looks like this. And so I'm gonna leave the, the description below, or I'm gonna leave the link in the description below where you guys can purchase these bungee straps for your remote collar. Now the doctor has a one inch collar strap, so you can't get the 3 fourths inch like maybe the 280C or the IQ Mini, which are a little bit smaller collars. So this is a one inch bungee. And again, I'm gonna leave that link in the description below so you guys can shop all of my Amazon uh, products that I suggest. And so what this does, guys, is it has a little bungee here. And when you put the black strap on the dog, this has no lee like leeway at all. It doesn't, it doesn't stretch at all. It doesn't give the dog any opportunity to flex out. And typically when your dog's uh, training with the remote collar for obedience, they're probably going to be off leash because that's why we love using the remote collars is for that responsible, reliable, safe off leash control. And so if you look again, I'm just gonna show you how this works. So your collar is gonna go on here and I put yellow tape on pretty much everything because we have a lot of other people training here. So I, I mark everything as mine with yellow. It doesn't come like this, but this is the dog to arc on the one inch bungee strap. And this is the bungees here. So these stretch, no, 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 no. She thinks she's done, she's not done. Touch, good girl. So she just wants to play ball. Like I said, guys, this is her ball playing field right here. So now to answer your question very basically on where the collar should be, um, I like to put the collar on the sides of the dog's neck. I don't like it up here because this is where the bone is. I like to put it right on the side here, um, right against the dog's uh, main muscles right here. So then what you do is you take these little antennas, tighten it up like this, and then it's nice and tight on the dog. Um, so that's how you would put the remote collar on a dog. If you guys are new to remote collar training or if you haven't watched any of my other videos on how the actual remote collar works, you'll know that um, depending on the collar, like the Dogtra IQ Mini has plastic uh, contact points, the Dogtra Arc has uh, metal contact points. All right guys, time for Tom's trivia. The question is, what is the most popular dog in the world? Leave your answers in the comments below. So your points here have to be touching the dog's skin in order for really good contact. And so I like to put it on here, make sure it's nice and tight, pull these bungees tight so it's touching the skin. And again, when you're using the bungee, when the dog's running, which is going to be in a B-roll here in a minute, when she's running she's chasing the ball and she's opening her mouth and her, muscle, her muscles are flexing in and out, this bungee is going to allow this collar to flex a little bit instead of being really constricted with the stock photo or the stock, uh, the stock collar, if you will. That if you have a dog with double coats, like Lakota has two coats. She has her guard hairs, which is the outside coat, and then she has her insulation coat on the inside. And if you have a dog like a Malamute, a Siberian Husky, even a Golden Retriever, something with very, very thick coat, on most dog chick collars, you can actually unscrew these contact points and put longer ones in. They make an inch, quarter inch, and I think a half inch as well. So when you order your remote collar from Dogtree, you can simply just order the, the extra prongs, or I'm sorry, the extra contact points to make sure that you're getting good contact. Now why, now why is it so important for you to have good contact points? It's very simple. Especially when, you're, when your dog is new or the dog that you're training is new to the remote collar, you must have consistency. So making sure that every single time you're using the remote collar and you're trying to communicate with the dog and you're trying to train the dog and you're trying to get the dog's attention, that it's consistent. So a lot of times what happens is, is people will get 
a collar and it'll kind of hang off the dog and it won't really touch the dog's neck until the dog moves right or something. And if you're high on your levels, you could correct the dog and you don't want to confuse them. So making sure that the collar is really tight is really important. And in my next video that's going to come out in a couple days, I'm going to tell you guys when to take the collar on, when to use the collar, when to take it off, so on and so forth. If you guys haven't watched my e-collar training videos on how to introduce the remote collar, you can click the link that's going to be above here. Now one thing I want to share with you guys that I don't think I ever have before here on the channel is why I started using the remote collar. So before I had my facility, I had a dog walking business and I would go out and walk dogs for a living. And that's how I basically started working with dogs professionally. And I can remember that we were out in my St. Bernard, he's still alive, he's kicking, uh, he's, not, he's not here right now, but he was out and he, we were going over these train tracks. And the dog that I was walking with was with me and my St. Bernard Thompson was off leash. Now at that point, I, I certainly was a trainer. I didn't know how to train off leash that good. I didn't really know anything. I just knew that I had a passion for dogs. I understood them. And at the time, when we were going over the railroad tracks, he started running away from me. And he thought it was fun. He thought it was a game. He was probably two years old at the time. And he started running. I had my dog that I was walking in one hand and I looked to my left and I saw a train headlight and I looked to my right and I saw my St. Bernard running away. Coda! Hey! And so, and so I did what anybody else would do is obviously like yell at your dog, try to get them back. Uh, you know, it was frantic. It was a very chaotic, stressful, adrenaline situation. And it was a long time ago, but I remember it like it was today. I looked to the left, looked to the right. He started running. I had two options. I either hope that he gets off the tracks while this train is coming, or I try to get him off the tracks myself. Uh, I, I don't know if I made the right decision, but I, I think I did. I ran after him. And I just remember turning around and hearing that and seeing that light. And it was daylight, but the light was on because I think they're always on. And I just like instincts kicked in. I looked, I saw it coming like really close, really, really close. And I just jumped and I grabbed him and I spinned off the tracks. I kicked back. And when you're on the railroad tracks, I was running in sandals. Um, and they have like really wide planks and there's big rocks in between. So I'm running on this train track with my dog that I'm walking and my dog's there. It was, it was not good. Not, 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 not good. And this is all way before I started training dogs. And so after that, it was so close to us getting hit that the conductor actually was trying to stop the train. And when he did stop, he actually um, came out with his clipboard and he thought he had to write a report of hitting me and the dogs. And luckily, thankfully, he did not do any of that. And we were able to walk away on scratch. So thank God for that. Um, but that's where something clicked to me where I was like, I never want to be in that situation again. So I started looking up like off leash training and then um janine lazarus which is a she's a trainer down in south carolina she's actually from england um, and she's the one who introduced me to dogcha and my story kind of began there with there was no politics involved it made sense it was like hey you can use this remote control to to train your dog off leash to communicate with them at no point did i say i don't want to hurt my dog i don't want to shock my dog that never i was like my I almost died, my dog almost, it was really, really bad. And at that point, like I said, there was no politics involved. There was no uh, training um, politics or aspects into it. It was just like, I never want that to happen again. And it wasn't until like two or three years into training, I started working the remote collar and people started asking questions about this shock collar. And then I was like, oh, you guys think, oh wait. And so anyway, I just wanted to share that story with you guys because the e-collar wasn't something I threw in my toolbox because I wanted to just do it. The e-collar I put in my toolbox because I almost saw my dog die and that, that's, was, that was huge for me. So anyway, I just wanted to share that story with you guys because I thought maybe it would be helpful for you guys to know how I started doing the remote collar training and how organic and not even an, like there was no like, should I? It was like, yeah, yeah, definitely almost got ran over by a train. How do I not let that happen again? And then my next video that I'm gonna do, uh, I'm gonna be talking about dog training tools, when you should be using them, when not to be using them, when to take collars off. Um, and this is the principles of using tools in your regular dog training uh, day. So make sure you like, subscribe to my channel, like I said before. And if you guys haven't yet, turn on your notification bell so you don't miss any opportunity to win some free no bag dog merch. And again, all of my equipment and the merch and the podcast, everything's going to be linked in the description below if you guys want to cop yourself some no bad dog merch. I will talk to you next time. Thank you guys so much. Bye.